If we were to ask you about Sweden, I'm sure many of you would automatically think of the environment, the fight against global warming, or even animal welfare. After all, we are talking about a country where more than 10% of the population is vegan or vegetarian, and yes, of course, it is also Greta Thunberg's homeland. So many of you may think of Sweden as something as a bastion of anti-pollution, anti-dirty industry, anti-exploration, and anti-natural resources, and the rejection of capitalist life in general. The land of campaigns for a different and better world that leaves behind materialism and the excesses of humanity. Well. At least, this is what many people think. For others, on the other hand, Sweden is probably the country that promotes the most radical social democracy and anti-development campaigns. Others may also think of immigration or waves of violence. Be that as it may, Sweden is usually a country that almost never leaves anyone indifferent. At least, almost no one. But beyond politics, this country has other very different facts. For example, what would you think if I told you that Sweden is also one of the great mining powers of Europe? Yes, a mining power. And while that's not exactly the world's most eco-friendly thing, it is 100% true. Of course, having said that, the question is, why on earth are the guys at Visual Politic talking about mining in Sweden? Is it really that relevant? Well, yes, the truth is that it is. It is much more important than we might think at first glance. Take a look at this. 12th of January 2022. Sweden finds Europe's largest deposit of rare earth metals, which could become more important than oil and gas. So there you have it. We are talking about huge deposits of 1 million tons of rare earth oxides, which, in addition to others discovered in Finland, Greece, and yes, also in Spain. 17 mineral elements with unique magnetic, luminescent, and electrochemical properties are known as rare earth elements. These include lanthanum or neodymium, which are used, among other things, to manufacture cars. There is also yttrium, which is essential for producing such diverse things as semiconductors and some pharmaceuticals. And some may be wondering, but then, why talk specifically about Sweden when there are deposits of these same minerals in other countries? Well, not only because this newly discovered deposit of rare earths is the largest in Europe, but also for other reasons not strictly related to mining. So, without giving any more spoilers, are you ready? Let's get into it. But first, let me ask you another one. Have you ever heard of ransomware. No, it's not a heavy metal band or anything like that. Look, imagine that you are surfing the internet and, without really knowing why, you end up on a website of a supposed antivirus software. The thing is that you download the software to test it and that's it. You've just installed a fake antivirus that has access to all of your data and now they're going to encrypt that data in exchange for a ransom or worse, they're going to steal it and sell them to a third party. If you think this can't happen to you, you might be right, but be very careful because it may happen to your parents since the elderly are the target audience of lots of ransomware. So what can we do? Always be very careful, keep your system updated and use NordVPN's threat protection tools just to be safe. Threat protection works in the background even when your device isn't connected to a VPN end server. And not only that, remember that when you use NordVPN, you can browse without borders, unlocking a whole world of content. It is also compatible with all different types of devices, Android, Windows, Macs, Linux, and you can include up to six devices on a single account. Don't wait any longer. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash VPN and get an exclusive deal for yourself. And if you change your mind, no problem. You can have 30 days to try it without any obligation. And now, let's get cracking with our video. The Rebirth of the Mining Muscle Mining in Sweden is not exactly a new activity. We're talking about a sector with a long tradition that has been evolving over some 6,000 years. In fact, one of its most famous mines, the Falun Mine, which is no longer in operation, provided enormous quantities of copper for almost a thousand years, from right back in the 10th century until 1992. In fact, for many centuries, Sweden had a virtual monopoly on copper globally. So talking about Sweden and mining also comes as no surprise. The ties between this country and this sector have historically been very close. As a result, in fact, Swedish companies have developed some of the most advanced and cleanest extractive technologies in existence. For example, iron ore extraction in Sweden generates only one third to one quarter of the environmental impact that it has in other less developed countries. The fact is that Sweden currently has 12 major mines in operation, particularly in the northern half of the country. All of them are dedicated to the exploitation of metals. We are talking mainly about iron, lead, zinc, gold, silver, and copper. In fact, Sweden has been the main supplier of iron in Europe since the 18th century and currently produces, wait for it, more than 90% of all the iron produced in the European Union, a third of the lead and zinc, and a tenth of the gold, silver, and copper. 
and take note because this may clash with the preconceived idea that many people have of Sweden and also with the fact that this sector is currently one of the most targeted by environmental groups as well as those factions of the left that have exchanged the proletarian revolution for the climate change cause. The truth is that in this country they take mining so seriously that they are even going to move an entire city so that one of their large mines can continue to operate. Swedish mining town sinking into the ground to be relocated building by building. We are talking about Karuna, the same location where the large deposit of rare earths mentioned at the beginning of this video was discovered. But this anecdote aside, the truth is that with the change in the production model, the energy transition and the new mobility promoted by governments around the world, Swedish mining could be on the verge of experiencing a golden era once again. And keep in mind, this is not only about the rare earths we have mentioned previously. In recent years, large deposits of many other resources have also been discovered that are absolutely strategic for the future, especially if the goal of zero carbon emissions by 2050 is to be met. Do you want an example? Well, take a look at this. 25th of January 2022. United Lithium discovers two new lithium rich pegmatites at Berg by Project Sweden with drilling ongoing. Between the rare earth deposit discovered in Karuna and this Bergby lithium deposit, Sweden could become one of the most strategically important countries in all of Europe by far. For those of you who are not very familiar with the subject, these raw materials, rare earths and lithium, are essential for the manufacturing things like electric cars, wind turbines and a large number of electronic devices. So much so that many experts consider them more important in the long term than gas or oil. Producing a 3 megawatt wind turbine requires 335 tonnes of steel, 4.7 tonnes of copper, 1200 tonnes of concrete, 3 tonnes of aluminium, 2 tonnes of rare earth elements as well as zinc, which is really illustrative of the volume of raw materials we need for the green transition. Maros Shevchevich, Vice President of European Commission for Interinstitutional Relations. So now you can see that we know that Sweden is a country very rich in virtually all of these resources. It is Europe's largest producer of iron, which is the main raw material used to produce steel, it is a major producer of copper and zinc, and now it could also become a major producer of rare earths and lithium. In other words, the Swedish subsoil contains almost all the raw materials that are indispensable for technological development and energy transition. But it is not just a question of economics, it is also a question of security. It is not just that Sweden could be another producer, but according to the data from the European Commission itself, currently around 98% of the rare earths that the European Union consumes come from a single country. Do you know which one? Exactly, it's the People's Republic of China. We have covered this in a past video here on Visual Politic, and of course, if one thing has become clear in recent times, it is that relying too much on one country for the supply of key resources can have dire consequences, even more so if that country is a dictatorship and a regime that is increasingly hostile to the West, as is the case with Xi Jinping and company. So it's no joke, Sweden could be a safe escape route to reduce this huge dependence and prevent things like this from happening in Europe. 22nd of September 2010. Amid tension, China blocks vital exports to Japan. Chinese customs officials are halting shipments to Japan of so-called rare earth elements preventing them from being loaded aboard ships at Chinese ports. 29th of May 2019. China is ready to use rare earths to strike back in a trade war with the United States, Chinese newspapers warned on Wednesday. So it's better to try not to rely solely on Chinese suppliers, even though China has approximately half of all proven reserves of rare earths in the world. In fact, that makes this a big issue. The problem is that according to the estimates of the European Union itself, by 2030, the demand for rare earths will increase fivefold worldwide. Electric cars, smartphones, tablets, technology networks, wind turbines, the demand is going to be phenomenal. And we are talking about a time frame of under seven years. So if we don't want Xi Jinping to have the upper hand, we need alternatives. And that's where Sweden comes in. And also other countries like Finland, of course. Certainly the bureaucrats in Brussels seem to be starting to be concerned about this issue. EU to introduce targets for raw materials self-sufficiency. In its critical raw materials act, the commission will be looking beyond the classic rare earths, Scandinavia type thing, to focus also on other materials that are needed for the green transition, Handley said. And clearly, copper is going to be necessary for electrification of the global economy. Of course, don't think that this generates much peace of mind in this sector. They are dreading Brussels' appetite for regulation. Take a look at this. At the moment, is it a priority to increase regulation? No, I think it's a priority to have successful projects delivering what you need a 
as a matter of urgency. Mark Krakowidis, president of lobby group Euromines, regarding the Future Critical Raw Materials Act. Be that as it may, all indications are that Sweden will experience a mining renaissance in the coming years, and this could be great news for the whole of Europe. Of course, for that to be possible, we have to join the dots. So far, we have two sides, the available resources and the mining companies wanting to extract them. But we are missing the third, Stockholm being on board. During the last few years, the Social Democratic government has not been particularly friendly to this industry. Bureaucratic processes dragged on, and exploration and exploitation licenses suffered enormous delays. In fact, according to the international ranking of Canada's Fraser Institute, between 2016 and 2021, Sweden has moved from 8th place to 36th place in attractiveness for mining investments. Of course, as many of you will know, it's something we've covered in our Patreon newsletter. October 2022 saw a change of political colour in the country. This new Swedish Prime Minister, the Conservative Ulf Kritterson, has been crystal clear on the issue. His position? Well, that he wants Sweden to become a mining nation again. So now this new government seems to want to make it easier for mining companies to grab the picks and shovel and get to work. They even want to boost investment by the state-owned mining company LKAB, which is the largest iron ore producer in all of Europe. Of course, since we are talking about Sweden, the new government has another ace up its sleeve that is bound to raise a few eyebrows. They want nothing less than to strengthen their role and become a kind of nuclear power for civilian use. Let's check this out. Sweden 3.0 Sweden, one of the greenest countries par excellence, could become one of the major European nuclear powers. We are talking about civil nuclear power, of course. In Stockholm, as far as we know, nuclear weapons have not yet been considered. But energy from atoms as one of the keys to the future is definitely being considered. And it seems that they are serious. In fact, the key proposition of the new government would be to replace the concept of 100% renewable energies with 100% fossil free energies. This means bringing nuclear production into the equation. And the truth is that, if you think about it, for a moment, it makes all the sense in the world. Sweden's bet will be on SMRs, small modular reactors. To this end, they are willing to modify the current legislation and provide public credit guarantees that until now were only available for renewable energies. And not only that, they even want to prohibit by law that any future government tries to speed up the decommissioning of nuclear reactors arbitrarily. In other words, they want to shield investments in this type of energy. In fact, all this has been embodied in an agreement, the Tito Agreement, an agreement that made it possible to form a government and which was reached between the parties of the right-wing bloc, the Christian Democrats, Democrats, the Liberals, the Moderate Party, and the Sweden Democrats. That's right, a four-party political agreement that underpins nuclear power. And don't forget that we are talking about Sweden. It's quite an about turn. This agreement also contains a commitment to developing the necessary legislation to implement small modular reactors in the country. Reactors that are considered the future of civil nuclear power. This will include ending the limit imposed by Swedish law of a maximum of 10 nuclear reactors operating at the same time, allowing construction at new locations other than existing plants, and simplifying the permitting process. To give you an idea of what this means, while Sweden currently has six reactors that provide around 31% of its energy, the nuclear slice of Sweden's future energy mix could be closer to 50%. This basically means that nuclear power could become the baseload power in the Scandinavian country, with renewables, which are not regular, as peak demand support. At the moment, two companies have already signed a memorandum of understanding to plan the deployment of a General Electric Hitachi's future Japanese BWRX 300 modular reactor, which would put Sweden at the forefront of new energy in Europe. SMRs can provide both industry and municipalities with predictable and fossil-free electricity, heat and hydrogen. Together with new wind power, new nuclear will be a crucial piece of the climate transition puzzle. Laurent Levaux, head of Fortum's new build feasibility study. So you see, the Swedes want to play again. The big question, or rather, the two big questions are, Will they do it, and will they be allowed to? Well, at the moment, all we know is that the study to build small to modular reactors in Sweden will be completed by the end of 2023 or early 2024. And as always, we'll be keeping a close eye on everything that happens in this Scandinavian country. But in the meantime, the questions are over to all of you. Will Sweden succeed in becoming the leading country for the European energy transition thanks to its mining industry? Will it be able to carry out its ambitious nuclear plans in the long term? Leave us your answers below in the comments. And remember, if you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to all of us here at Visual Politics so you don't miss any of our latest updates. And remember that you can actively support us by joining our community on Patreon. We'll leave you a link 
in the description. Once again, thank you for watching, all the best, and I'll see you next time.